Welcome to a Winter Royale Fortnite gameplay review, presented by Fortnite Master. Since so many people really enjoyed our last gameplay review, we've decided to do another one. This time, reviewing some of Kai's Winter Royale qualifier games. By the way, Kai is our writer. We've made the review video more analytical this time, and are trying to focus on explaining why each play goes the way they do, and attempt to talk about how things could have been played differently as well. We hope you guys don't mind the long view time, and enjoy the video. Welcome everybody to the gameplay review portion of this video. My name is The Saved One, and joining me is the writer of the Fortnite Master Team, Kai. How you doing? Hey, not bad. Uh, how are you doing? Doing pretty, pretty well, and this is you playing in the uh, the Winter Royale that just went by. What did you, what's, your, uh, what's your takes on the Winter Royale? Because I, knew, I know a lot of people had pretty mixed opinions. Well, I actually think it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed yeah. it uh, immensely. I had a ton of fun kind of playing in these high skill lobby, knowing mm. lobbies, knowing that every player I go up against is going to be another skilled player. I have to take every engagement seriously and kind yeah. of respect other players. Um, so, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And even starting here right off the bat, you want a hot drop, right? Why do you hot drop over to Viking? Well, first of all, I'm only at five points still, even though it's only yep. a little more than a half an hour into the session. You know, these lobbies aren't going to be super stacked. Another reason is I just, I'm a fan of Viking Village. It's one of my favorite drop spots. Mm -hmm. I feel really comfortable fighting here early. I feel re really comfortable skirmishing and holding angles. So we'll see what we can do here. Yeah, and then your immediate thought process is to go right across the street. You want to pick up as many weapons as possible, but you also see some shooting over towards the right side. Yeah, so uh, th this guy right here runs up on me, took a couple shots on me. I'm able to block him off at the wall, but he pushes me and whips out a pump shotgun, mm -hmm. which obviously is very scary when you only have a gray AR and a gray pistol. He also has the right hand peak here, which is really important. And if he just keeps on kind of moving around this corner, mm -hmm. he'll be able to pick off my head pretty easily if I'm standing still not moving. So that's why I decided to play aggressive here with the gray pistol, mm -hmm. <laughs> as weird as that sounds, and kind of jump out of that angle he has. So mm -hmm. I make myself a little bit harder of a target in order to hopefully get a better trade. Yeah. And you also, you start shooting there with the pistol, and then you switch to the AR. Why, why do you choose the pistol specifically? Uh, you know, neither weapon is the best choice, but gray AR jumping hip fire spray yeah. is probably one of the most inaccurate things I've ever experienced. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So I go up on this guy, my plan is to get a first shot accuracy headshot and then into the spray. Unfortunately, I missed the first shot accuracy headshot just by a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm still able to get a decent amount of damage on the spray, though. I'm going to follow it up with a push here and then just finish off this kill with a quick shotgun shot yeah and there was a lot of damage initially so you knew you were allowed to play aggressive there but now Correct. you also hear some some movement over towards your north side yep i hear a uh, a guy who just finished a fight here mm -hmm. over here and he's kind of right under me at this point dropping down there can be kind of dangerous and can turn into a 50 50 a lot of the time so i move around get a better angle on here on mm -hmm. him here and wait for the edit yeah and that, that's an interesting decision as well, because a lot of players will just full on go aggressive there. Um, why did you wait and just track him inside of the inside of the building there? I think uh, that decision was majorly based off the, the fact that this is, you know, even though it's only five points, half an hour in, we're still in the Winter Royale mm -hmm. qualifiers. And, you know, regardless of skill level, these players are probably going to be playing pretty seriously. So yeah. uh, you know, the edit plays are something you really want to look out for. And now this is a, a lot of the moments where some players will maybe crack under the pressure because you finished your original area. All of the players are basically dead in this area. Now, what is your thought process? I don't know if crack under the pressure, but maybe get a little bit too antsy, a little bit sure. too eager to kind of move on. It's mm -hmm. very important to kind of know the places you land and loot them thoroughly. Yeah. after you uh clear out the area make sure you know you're farming some mats in the meantime uh getting all the chests getting mm -hmm. all the upgrades that you can get uh so when you leave you are in the best possible position mm -hmm. and you immediately drop onto this player right here 
Yep. Uh, still, pre still playing pretty aggressive. Mm -hmm. uh, again, these lobbies aren't super stacked, and I, I kind of want to get the uh, seven kill threshold to get the maximum elimination points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still pretty pretty early on in the skirmish. Want to be able to optimize my points. Mm -hmm. And I can tell this play is pretty good already, right? Yeah. Because he immediately kind of broke down, edited down, boxed up, broke into the house, really kind of made his position unknown. And it was just, a, it was a good disengage, right? Yeah. And I love how and... much respect you give to this player too. Yeah, maybe I give him a little bit too much respect here. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm playing pretty passive, but I I can tell he's a good player just from the way he's playing. So mm -hmm. I don't want to give him high ground for free. That's the main point. Yeah. I know even, again, some players will get a, a little bit too antsy and just immediately go for for that low ground push. But you, you keep your high ground up until this point here. Yeah, up until I know his position and I spot yeah. him. And right here again, I'm waiting for the edit play. And, you know... <laughs> Little BM, got to dance on him. Yeah, it's got to hit him with a new dance. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorites for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very simple. I always love the more, more simple dances. I think those are the the funnest. And this is a, a another one of the beautiful rotations about la uh, landing here in particular because you could third party inside of Shifty, but then you can also go on that hill inside of Tilted. Yeah, so we're going to see that in a second yeah. here. Kind of as I kind of turn around after eating the mushrooms and a glide towards Tilted, I see these two players in a pretty high build fight mm -hmm. as I can see it from that angle. I get out of my ghost forum, see a third player who's trying to also third party. I decide to fourth party, if you want to call it, him. Mm -hmm. And then I immediately look, see if I can shoot this structure down, make these players follow the fall to their death but again when you're lobby when you're in the lobby with decent players as soon as they hear those third party shots coming in they're going to drop down themselves so they know that they don't want to get shot out and i love this flip focus as well you don't just try and hammer down one person it's just like i want to put pressure on all of these guys yeah take shots at whoever you can take shots at whoever's the most open and also watch for if they look back at you because mm -hmm. it's really common for good players to look back at you if they have a chance while you're third partying and you saw a few seconds ago that guy tried to take some shots on me but luckily i was paying attention and mm -hmm. able to get that ramp up to block even his first shots that he tried to take and if you guys saw earlier kai quickly looked over to the right just to see the quad just so that he had some sort of an escape and that's what you go for here Yep, and that's kind of that knowledge is part of the reason I was comfortable taking a little bit of storm damage here to mm -hmm. hopefully get some extra good shots and see what I can do. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for him, that happens. I'm able to rip him. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah. Right hit him with a 180. Hit him right. with a 180. That was bop. really good. Oh, that was sick. Um, and then, yeah, you just you make it in pretty safely, but then you also remember seeing a couple of people fighting inside of Tilted, so you might expect someone to come into this uh, safe area through this entrance. Yep, and that's why I build up on this hill to catch the extra rotations. Luckily, they come out of the storm in the same yeah. exact area I did, exactly where I'm waiting for them, able to get some shots off. Mm -hmm. And I accidentally fall down, putting myself at a really kind of weird angle straight down. I don't like that angle. It's easy for them to trade back from the low ground. Mm. So I build over here to get a better angle on this guy. Now it's easy for him to trade back on me and uh, finish him off. Yeah, and he just kind of jumps out into the open with, yeah. with nothing. It was like a last stand moment. But yeah, definitely good, uh, well played on your part just to um, work with the situation that you had. So I t open the map here, take a look, mm -hmm. and the circle is pretty much on the exact opposite side of where I am. I have to travel probably the farthest distance possible. Yep. Uh, I left the quad on purpose just because, you know, it makes a lot of noise, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to be a little bit more stealthy on this rotation. I don't want to get caught, you know, in the middle of my rotation and have somebody try to push me when the storm's coming because either they don't realize it's a, a kind of a dumb play or you know they just they're really really thirsty for that kill so i'm gonna grab a shadow stone here mm -hmm. and just use it to kind of hop on over to the circle relatively for free and also like how you you still like go down here just to get the max amount of distance with the shadow stone
I see this ramps build up. I don't want to just sit with my head out though, aiming at this because I don't want to get sniped, obviously. But mm -hmm. as soon as this guy shows himself, I'm gonna take some shots. And I do see that heavy sniper he pulls out, so I know that can be a little bit dangerous right here, especially if he's trying to low ground peek me and he, and he has a good shot. Which I think he's gonna try to do here. So I'm not gonna peek that. I'm not gonna give it to him for free. Mm -hmm. I also love how you uh, you built up just the the flat ramp, but didn't execute until now. Really yep. Good. Yeah. A couple reasons for that. One, mm -hmm. you can bait him maybe into taking the shot, right? Reacting a little bit too, mm -hmm. um, a little bit too quickly. It's you can also jump on it and just build up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he tries to build up on me here. Yeah. Denied. <laughs> Simple stuff. Put some traps down. Mm -hmm. Pull a cheesy play, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Right here, I messed up my builds. I wanted to get on top of those, but luckily I'm able to trade the shotgun shot back. Mm -hmm. And I, I get a little bit too kind of eager and excited here. Yeah. And I jump down on top of him, hope, hoping I can finish off the kill, even though I haven't done that much damage to him in reality. Mm. And he kind of punishes me for it by editing up and retaking high ground. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of those scenarios from what I saw where the other player was super focused on building, but then not on shooting. <laughs> yeah, they were just focused on getting high ground there. Yeah. Little little peak shot. That was sick. <laughs> and then I hear the rockets start to come in here from the third party. Mm -hmm. Obviously trying to knock us down. So I'm going to jump down from that situation and at this point two rockets have already hit this structure and i'm pretty uh i'm pretty certain that the only thing holding it up at this point is my metal one by one mm -hmm. which is not going to be destroyed by one rocket he's going to have to shoot a couple yeah and in order to kind of speed up the process speed up the kill mm -hmm. right here i'm going to go and edit out my one by one so this guy has to drop down and uh hopefully i can get the kill before this third party has enough time to get on top of both of us. Yeah, it's just being one step ahead of your opponent, and in this case, it definitely helped you out. Yep, so now I'm just listening for the guy's footsteps because I heard him drop on the ground, trying to pinpoint where he is. I think he's in the building, mm -hmm. so that's why I'm looking there. <laughs> Luckily, I'm able to hit him with a flick when I realize yeah. that he's not in the building. That was sick, and now you're, or the opponent here tries to capitalize on the positioning as well. Yeah, and he got here a lot faster than I thought he was, I'm not going to lie. I think he used a Shadow Stone or something. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but this is a really bad position to be in against a good player or what we're assuming is a good player who's kind of shooting rockets down at you from the high ground. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's hard to come back from a situation like this without some really good plays. And I know I'm in a tight spot right here. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, I tried to go for a cheesy play and pick up this heavy sniper and get a quick snipe. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately he just barely misses. It would have been a lot Tries of damage though. Yeah, I would have killed him. It shoots a rocket behind me. Make sure to block off my back so I don't take any splash damage. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to build up here because obviously he has rockets and being on the low ground against rockets is just is really tough, right? Yeah. So instead of trying to turtle on the ground, I'm going to try to build up here and retake high ground. Fortunately, there's a tree right in front of me which kind of hinders things, but yep. it didn't he jumps on top of me, cracks me. Yeah, react to the scenario there, but then... Yep, just a quick spray. Yeah, it's pretty... Yeah. He played He played pretty aggressive there, and then you ended up uh, landing some good shots. Yeah, so I, mean, I was able to trade back with the SMG spray. Mm -hmm. And also spray out his ramp, so he couldn't kind of get out, drop him back in. And then, you know... And then we both take shotgun shots at each other. He misses his, a little bit too hasty, and I'm able to land mine. That's pretty much the end of the fight. Like, yep. when you when you jump on players really, really aggressively like that, it's kind of what you don't want to do because then you turn it into a 50-50 a lot of the time, right? Just whoever mm -hmm. can hit their shots. Yeah, definitely. And an example of, of a, an aggressive game was that one. You played continuously um, very uh, in the enemy's face. But then you also have a replay of one where you played a little bit more passive and you turtled. Yep. So one of the really uh, cool and interesting fun parts about these Winter Royale qualifiers was the end games that, yeah. you know, 
almost felt like a scrim lobby as close to as close yeah. to a scrim lobby as a lot of casual players are gonna get right yeah um which is actually really exciting for me it was a lot of things i hadn't done ever before mm -hmm. in a game uh which it made it kind of really fun and a new challenging experience and i know that myth was saying like a couple of seasons ago even how uh when like right when competitive fortnite just started it's gonna eventually get to the point where players in these competitive games are going to start taking the pro strats and use them for their own. And this is an example of one of them. And we see a lot in at least the fall skirmish, we saw how players, instead of placing a ramp, they placed a pyramid so that they're, again, super flexible on where they can block from, where they can aim from. But when you have four pyramids, now you have just endless amounts of opportunities. Yeah, because obviously you can edit a pyramid into something uh, similar to a ramp in any direction mm -hmm. uh, you can edit those pyramids if somebody tries to push into your thing you can edit the wall and edit the pyramid kind of get yourself some distance get some structures in between you two mm -hmm. yeah yeah and yeah it's a it's a pretty passive game um here yeah at this at this point it's pretty passive and i got the next circle so i'm not like oh, yeah. in any rush to move Another advantage these pyramids give you is kind of being able to adjust uh, your peak angle through this window and get a little bit higher, a little bit lower angle on uh, any players rotating or fighting. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit more here into the next rotation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, the one thing I love about these circles is just how far they can go. <laughs> it's like all of a sudden it's going up until one point and then it just whips across your, your map. <laughs> yeah. Great. So as soon as I see where the circle is, mm -hmm. I'm going to go try to get a good position for the mm -hmm. rotation, right? Yeah. Um, getting into a good position for a rotation early allows you to kind of build up and take shots on other players who are trying to rotate late or other players who are like in the middle of a fight. And it's a really, really crucial part of getting late game kills in these lobbies and kind of putting pressure and clearing them out. Mm -hmm. I've learned. Yeah, definitely. And you kind of see a little bit of building towards your left, but the player just grapples in. Yeah, I hear the grapple. Luckily, I'm able to react fast <laughs> enough to whip around and hit him with my shotgun when he's flying in. It looked like he tried to build on me right there. It mm -hmm. does. It didn't look like he was going for the shot because he would have taken that in midair, right? He just mm -hmm. kind of landed on me and he tried to build that floor. Yeah. It just didn't work for him. And you also don't pick up the grappler here. Uh, you keep the dynamite because dynamite's actually really good. In in uh, this patch in particular, you need your your meds. Um, what do you switch out here for that grappler if you were to pick that up? Well, going back to what you said about the dynamite, you're right. completely right. It is very important here, especially with all these tur all these turtles. You can yeah. just throw one dynamite and get rid of it. Take shots at whoever's in it. But you're also definitely right about the grappler. I should have dropped my SMG for the grappler here. Mm -hmm. Grapplers in a late game scenario like this, where um, you know, you're against other decent players and it's kind of the moving circle rotations, you're building, you're taking shots. Grapplers are like top, top tier in these situations. You yep. always want to pick them up. I mean, I should have dropped my SMG 100% for that grappler and I should have had the grappler and the dynamite right here instead of uh, SMG dynamite. Mm -hmm. And you Which see, is a huge mistake. Yeah. Right. And you see how now your your opponent here, you have one, one person third partying, one person above you. What's your thought process here? Well, I shouldn't have pushed the other guy in the first place for high ground with a third yeah. party rocketing us. That was kind of a hasty play. And I go over here and make another hasty play. I try to pick up the big shield and get it off, and I drop my dynamite for it. But I don't have time <laughs> to get the big shield off, and I yeah. leave my dynamite there, which is huge mistake number two behind the grappler. Mm -hmm. Probably contributed a lot to me losing this game. Mm -hmm. Definitely uh, two big games. Yeah, definitely kind of restricted the amount of plays I can make, right? Mm -hmm. um, so right now I'm trying to take shots at this guy rotating. I know he's super low. I've hit him yeah. for two two white AR shots. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ed is down and the other player yep. shotguns him. Yep. It's so, unfortunate. So much progress and all of it is lost just to one shotgun shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. And then now, again, you don't you don't really want to turtle. You're just rotating, but then you also are looking to go on the offensive. Yeah, you can't turtle when, with these moving circles because they yep. never stop once they start moving. Mm -hmm. I gotta kill this guy though, right? Just looking to yeah. go on the offensive. And I make another huge mistake here. I could have pyramided myself on top of my ramps and edited it through. I think I would have gotten high ground. Yeah. 
Instead, I turn around and play like a bot for the rest of the game. I jump down, <laughs> I take fall damage. I yeah, let the nerves get to me, let yep. the inexperience really get to me. Mm -hmm. um, and at this point, I'm just going for low ground shots. Able to get one here, but like it's only 64 damage, just not anything crazy. I also could have been farming here mm -hmm. just to have like a few walls, a yep. few floors. Mm -hmm. um, Especially in an area like Fatal Fields is kind of forest little area there. There's a lot of trees. Mm -hmm. I was blessed with natural cover, but still. Yep. This guy wasn't gonna give anything to me for free. So Dang. Yeah, it was it was also a moment I believe it was before your you landed your first shotgun shot there, where you ended up just missing a quick shotgun shot. Um and that could have definitely attested to maybe your Right there. Yeah, right there. That would have been huge. Because then you land yeah. around 60-ish. Um, and then you land another 66. And yet, yeah, unfortunate. Oh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching our Winter Royale Fortnite gameplay review. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like down below. Also, don't forget to share with your friends on Twitter and on Reddit. If you have any suggestions or thoughts, as always, leave them in the comment section below. From over here at Fortnite Master, my name is The Saved One, and we're out. Peace.